Hey, I want to thank you for being here. You can catch more conversations just like this one on arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 549 is with National Geo's most famous bird watcher, Mr. Noah Stricker. Hey, great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. We got to talk about something here because I've learned a valuable thing here. My second grade teacher, even my first grade teacher was wrong. I've, you know, when you have a Y, it's supposed to be a long I, not a short I, because you're, you're Noah Stricker. <laughs> That's right. It's German. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. So there are roots to that then. <laughs> yeah, apparently it means someone who knits or weaves. <laughs> and do you? Uh, well, I suppose I weave stories. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want you to know right off the bat that I am a huge bird fanatic. I, I have four birds in my house. I call them my jazz. And even though you know they, they, their sounds and their music do not match, they really do. Oh, I suppose they can uh, make up some melodies on the spot. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, I mean, it's, it's like uh, my, my doves will like last night they were singing all night long. And it's, it's such peace to to, you know, those that, that stay inside the home, because there's just something about a bird song that really brings things forward. Oh, yeah, totally. What led you to do, you know, to work with uh, National Geographics with this? Because, I mean, this this is one of the most fascinating down to earth. Here it is, guys. Kind of a book. Well, Nat Geo uh, got the idea for this book a couple of years ago, really, in the midst of the pandemic, because all of a sudden the world was shut down and people realized, oh, we can still go out in nature and look at birds. That's not shut down. So there's been this huge surge of interest in birding over the pandemic, this positive thing, really. People got interested in birds in ways they never have before. So this book, as much as anything, is a product of that uh, for all the new birders who have just come up in the world. Well, you're absolutely right about that in, in the way that I, I know that during the lockdown, uh, you know, campgrounds were still open. And I know that Sesquicentennial Park in Columbia, South Carolina, they have a big, big connection to birding. And, and, and so many people will go to those you know, to take that walk and they explain the birds that are in that area. Yeah. And the cool thing about birding is it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. Birds are everywhere around all of us all the time, pretty much. And so you can just open your front door in the morning and head outside and em embrace the birds that are right there around you. That's pretty much what I do every morning. Slip out of bed, go out the front door, see what birds are out there for a few minutes and then get my day started. So true. That, that's one of the reasons why I take a transition walk every day is because no, no electronic devices, because I'm going out there to listen to the hawk. To, and, and I love it when you'll have a screeching hawk and all of a sudden in the background you'll, you'll hear, hoo, 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 hoo. and it's like, oh, my God, I'm in heaven. I love these birds. Oh, just this morning, uh, I live in Western Oregon, and it's a frosty morning out here today, and I've been listening to a pair of great horned owls that inhabits the patch of trees just upslope from our house, and I can hear the male and female calling back and forth to each other. They're having quite a discussion this morning. <laughs> hey, you know, you being up there in Oregon, I, I, I'm going to ask you a personal question, because I, I was up there at the whole rainforest up there in Washington, and, and the, the most elegant bird I've ever seen in my life came uh, flying by us, and the guy goes, that's an Oregon blue. I'm I'm in love with the Oregon blue. The Jays? Yes. Are they not the, the color? It's a deep, rich blue. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, Stellar Jays here in the um, conifer forest and they are beautiful birds. They're completely dark blue and it fades into a black head with a big spiky crest. Yep. People get a little annoyed with them sometimes because they're jays and they're obnoxious and loud, <laughs> but I really like the Stellar's jays. <laughs> they really like peanuts, so if you want to make friends with a Stellar's jay, just put some peanuts out. <laughs> <laughs> Are we cheating on the bird system when, when we put out the bird feeders and things? Because, I mean, it's like people get mad at me when I put out the, you know, try to feed the deer. They don't like that at all. But I, but I, it's like, you know what? You were feeding uh, birds. Are we, are we cheating the system? Oh, no. I mean, scientifically, there's all kinds of studies that show that birds that come to feeders, if you suddenly remove the feeders or they run out of food, they do just fine. They go back to eating whatever they're eating in the wild. But it's a great way to bring birds close to you. So my best advice for feeding birds is to put bird feeders outside your window so that you can actually see them from inside your house and your kitchen or your living room because 
it's a constant entertainment. I mean, it's 24 hours a day, pretty much. <laughs> I, I don't know if you caught uh, Shark Tank last week, but the, this gentleman has invented a mask that he puts over his face, and what what and he, and he puts the little juice or the sweet stuff in there for hummingbirds to come up there. And it was it was amazing to see that. Wow, to get that close to a hummingbird. I had not seen that. I will check that out. That sounds amazing. I totally see how it could work, though, because hummingbirds are fearless little creatures. They practically have no predators, and they love sugar water. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when it comes to these, these birding apps for your smartphone, how easy are they? And is it, is it more about information, or is it because I don't see an app locating it? There's a bunch of different apps now that birders are using. Probably the most useful one for especially people who are just getting into birds, but I use all the time as well, is called Merlin, M-E-R-L-I-N. It's produced by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. It's totally free to download, and it's packed. It's got a full field guide. It's got all the info and images of birds and recordings of their sounds, too, so you can check what they sound like. And it has different ways of identifying birds. So it will identify photos. You can upload a photo, and it will tell you what bird it is with amazing accuracy. And it can also identify bird sounds now, like a Shazam for bird sounds in real time. So you can hold your phone up if a bird is singing nearby, and it will take a guess at what bird that is. I just think it's incredible that they can do that. And um, it works pretty well. <laughs> I, I, I could just see myself doing that with the with the metal arc. I mean, it's and what's really weird is that the, the book features the eastern metal arc. But I grew up in Montana where we had the western metal arc. Are they not one and the same birds? No, those are two different species. They look very similar, but the sound is quite different. The western metal arc really? sings a different melody than the eastern metal arc does. The eastern metal arc has a really sweet, uh, almost syrupy song, and the western metal arc has more of like a burbling, explosive sound that you hear in sagebrush flats in the western desert. <laughs> There's even a new one, actually, just this past year. The metal arcs in the southwest have been split as their own species, and they're called Chihuahuan metal arcs. So that's a new bird you'll see in field guides published starting this year. What do you, what do you personally uh, receive as as you know as a bird lover when when you have projects like this? Because it, to me, it, it takes you deeper into the story of these of these beautiful creatures. I just think that birding is fascinating because you can approach it from so many different angles. You can go to far corners of the world and see interesting birds that you've never seen before and add to your life list. That's all the birds you've ever seen. Or you can stay closer to home and look at one common bird that you've seen every day of your whole life and still find new interesting behaviors to watch because of course birds are not like inanimate objects they're living breathing creatures of their own and individuals they have personalities just like animals do and uh, so they're they're fun to watch and try to figure out what they're doing and why they're doing it yeah birding burning is one of those things that, that i've always cherished in the way that uh here in the south where we have the tropical storms and the hurricanes is that when there's a big storm coming in expect new birds to be in your forest but yes, birders get very excited about extreme weather because <laughs> they can blow in interesting species. And it's, it's pretty exciting when a bird blows in that doesn't normally live in your area, but it gets reported and then it goes out on the rare bird alerts. And uh, I'm often the first one out the door to try to go track down oh, unusual yeah. birds nearby where I live because uh, that doesn't happen every day. Yeah, absolutely true. So where can people go to find out more about you, Noah? Because, I mean, I mean, what, what you're talking about inside this book, I mean, it's it, it, so well beyond where, uh, a book. You, you are so actively involved. Yeah, I've been into birds since I was about 12 years old. My fifth grade teacher put a bird feeder on our classroom window and made us try to identify every bird that showed up that year. And that's what got me hooked. And it's been a slippery slope ever since then. So I just think it's pretty cool that you can make a career out of watching and studying and writing about birds. That's not something I ever really set out to do as a career. It was just something that I was interested in. One thing leads to another. So, you know what, you know, it's interesting that you say that you just gave me a big flashback of when I was a childhood because you started out so young that, that my favorite birds still have got to be the chickens we raised and the pigeons we had because they, they started this entire journey, this love affair. Oh, 
we raised chickens <laughs> here in rural Oregon where I grew up and uh, turkeys actually oh my gosh I remember when I was little there was this one big tom mean turkey <laughs> that uh, would chase me around every time I went to try to feed him so he was the uh, Thanksgiving bird that year. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy birds in many ways. <laughs> you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Noah. Well, great. Uh, thank you so much. You bet. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Great. Wow, it's always fun to chat about birds. Absolutely.